This is a hostage takeover. Sometimes when we look at scripture, what we see is a bunch of restrictions. Don't do this, don't do that, don't do this, don't do that, don't do this, don't do that. And we kind of get like a little frustrated. We think, why is it saying all of these things? Well, today in this hostage takeover, I want to answer that question. Why could we not eat certain meats back in the Old Testament? Of course, if you're a beginner and you're looking at the Bible for the first time or just, you you know, you didn't go to Bible college or you didn't really go to Bible class growing up or you're just a churchgoer and just kind of trying these things out, let me give you this information. There's an Old Testament and a New Testament, an Old Covenant and a New Covenant. Now, man separated the, the chapters and the verses and named the books themselves, but this is really God's Word. The Old Testament um, and, and the whole scripture is kind of divided into little segments. Now, you can go too far with this, and I don't want to go too far with this, but I want, want you to see that, you know, at one point, it was just God and the people and Adam and Eve in the garden, and, and he was talking to them directly. And then he would talk to people like Abraham or Noah. He would tell Noah, you know, you're my servant, I'm going to save you. And he talked to Abraham. So he basically talked to the whoever was uh, the dad of the family, the oldest man in the family. And then he talked to Moses and he did those kind of things. But then he gave Moses a written commandment. And so he gives them laws. And so that's the kind of the laws that we're talking about. And this is, uh, this is a covenant he made with his people. And so these laws are lasting for a really long time. Some of them he kind of called one kind of law. And then some of them he said like these 10 laws, these Ten Commandments, he said these are like forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. But then there's these other laws that are kind of right for right now, for you right people. You you were listening to my voice to call it Mosaic Law. And then you get um, um, come along a little bit later and you get to something where Jesus shows up, the Son of God. And he's like, I have new commandments, which some of them are really old commandments, like love God, love others. That was already there. But he came in and, he, and with his blood, he put to death the old covenant, the old law, and we made a new covenant with us. And so therefore separating the Old Testament, the Old Covenant, and the New Testament, the New Covenant, and giving us a new set of laws, but really more of a new life to live and, and a new perspective on who God was. And that's a whole nother hostage takeover. But I just wanted to give you that little bit right there in the middle. Here's what scripture says. Leviticus chapter 11, starting in verse 1. The Bible says, the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, say to the Israelites of all the animals that live on the land, these are the ones you may eat. You may eat any animal that has a split hoof completely divided and that chews the cud. Oh man, that sounds exciting. I want to eat uh, an animal that chews the cud. Okay, that's just weird. All that, it's just in there kind of distinguishing these animals. But here are the animals you can eat. These are the ones that have a cloven hoof. I got a list here. I'm going to read it to you. And they they include the antelope, <laughs> the cattle um, of any kind. So a cow, you know, goats, elk, deer, praise the Lord, because I love me some venison. But on the other hand, you can't eat rabbits or pigs. They don't qualify for one without a split hoof. So I wonder what's that all about? I'll keep reading. There are some that only chew the cud or have only a split hoof, but you must not eat them. The camel? <laughs> you know, I've never ever looked at a camel and thought to myself, oh, I'm so hungry, I could eat a camel. I don't know if anybody else has ever said that. Maybe in one part of the world, maybe they go, Oh, I'm so hungry, I could eat a camel. Maybe not. Maybe maybe no one has ever said that, and, and maybe that is not what I should have said. Okay, so, though it chews the cud, does not have a split hoof. It is ceremonial unclean for you. The coney, or, well, we call that, um, I don't know exactly what a coney is. It's a, um, a rock badger or something like that. All right, so the coney, though it chews the cud, does not have a split hoof. It is unclean for you. The rabbit. Oh, no, no, take away the rabbit. You know, we can't eat a rabbit um, because they, um, though it chews the cud, it does not have a split hoof. It is unclean for you. And then the pig. Oh, no, don't take away my bacon. I love me some bacon. Bacon is great. 
I like bacon wrapped bacon. It's my favorite. I know. Don't take away the pig. Why can't we have the pig? Though it has a split hoof completely divided, it does not chew the cud. It is unclean for you. You must not eat their meat or touch their carcasses. They are unclean for you. So this is one of the first categories. And like chewing the cud is kind of this thing where they're kind of chewing on things and it's really kind of hard to explain because I'm not a veterinarian, but I know what it looks like because you see that old cow out there and they're chewing the cud, okay? Same thing with camel, rabbit, you know, they're always eating something, but they, he, he puts in this one specific thing and that is because the rabbit, it has diseases that it carries. So uh, I, I got this written out, it's uh, tumularmia, I don't know, tularmia. And, and it's a, a bacterial disease that can be transmitted to humans and it's nasty. And, and then we have these other diseases that, that, that pigs carry and you can even get in contact with that disease just by feeding them, walking around in their, their, their feed place that is full of their feces and it's not so good. So these are unclean, you know, like, uh, so I can go to the restaurant and I can have a rare steak I can have it really, really rare. I can have it bleeding and it's not gonna hurt me. But when I get pork, or if I got rabbit, or I got chicken, or some other kind, well, if I got pork and rabbit for specifically here in this particular thing, and it's not completely cooked, it can make me sick. And uh, I may not be able to tell that it's bad. When you have beef that's bad, you can tell it's bad. So that's the first thing. He says, don't eat the, the animal that does not have a split hoof and chew the cud. So there we have, they have to have a, a fully split hoof and chew the cud. So you can't eat a camel, you can't eat a horse. And then he says, listen to this. Of all the creatures living in the water of the seas, this is Leviticus chapter 11 verse nine, and, and the streams, you may eat any that have fins and scales. So that's the two things they must have. But all creatures of the seas or the streams that do not have fins and scales, which uh, whether among all the swimming things or among all the other living creatures in the water, you are to detest. Okay, so you can have a bass, you can have salmon, you can have all kinds of things. You can have cod, flounder, grouper, you can have snapper, trout, tuna, all of those things were good back then, but you can't have a catfish, which when I first tasted a catfish, it tasted like the pond that it came from, and I didn't like catfish for many, many years, so I was kind of like, hallelujah, amen, no catfish. But then it's no lobsters. Oh no, now we're going to Medlin. No crabs, can't go all you can can't go to Joe's Crab Shack. It says no shrimp, and many other water creatures do not have fins and scales. God says that we should detest them, that we should stay away from them. What in the world? Well, have you ever met someone who had um, an allergy to shellfish like these, like crabs and, and shrimp and things, and what happens to them? Their whole throat throat closes up, it's like, what oh, that thing? Anaphylactic kind of thing. And what God was doing is he was protecting his people from those kind of things. So he's just kind of like, don't eat those. Maybe 98% of you won't get sick, but then again, 2% of you might die. So we should probably stay away from those things, is what he's telling those people. Now, we have medicine, we have all these other kind of things, we can detect that, we can get help, and so I believe that we're okay. Now, we'll get into that just momentarily. There's a big list here of the kind of things that he says do not eat, and so we want to determine why he said not to eat them, and so what we're going to do is just look at a couple of reasons. The first, I think, is really a powerful one, and that was that he wanted to set his people apart. He wanted to make them holy. You know, he's, he wanted them to be, that was what that word means, set apart, different from the world, to be when the, those are those people who don't do this and don't do that. Well, it's not about that necessarily, but he wanted to make them pure and holy and clean, and that's what he was doing when he did that. The second thing is, is protection, right? This word here, protection. He wanted to protect them from diseases and uh, things that some of those animals were carrying, and not necessarily just that, but like um, diseases where, where um, for instance, 
that, that maybe not everybody's afraid or, or allergic to shellfish, but some people are, and they'll get sick. And then there's this other word for for competition. So we have competition, um, which means that, all right, so say you want to raise a camel, what do they eat? Okay, grain, but how long does it take a camel to get to be a big camel from a baby camel? It takes a really long time. And if they're com competing with what they eat, then that's a bad thing. Horses, kind of the same thing. They're, they're to keep them away. And because that they will eat the same things they're eating. And so um, you see a lot of donkeys and you see a lot of all these. You're just setting them apart. You're not going to eat these things that God said not to eat. So when did it change? When can we find a change in the narrative of do not eat this, do not eat that? We have to fast forward in our scripture from Leviticus 11. We'll fast forward all the way to Acts chapter 10. So we're going to fast forward. Here we go. Acts chapter 10 verse 9. About noon the following day, they were on a journey and approaching the city. Peter went up on the roof to pray. They became hungry and he wanted something to eat. Hmm. Sounds familiar. And while the, the meal was being prepared, he fell into a trance. And he saw the heavens open. And then, uh, like a big large sheet being let down to the earth by its four corners. It contained all kinds of four-footed animals, as well as reptiles of the earth and birds of the air. And then a voice said to him, Get up, Peter. Kill and eat. Surely not, Lord, Peter replied. I've never eaten anything impure or unclean. And the voice spoke to him a second time. Do not call anything impure that God has made clean. And it's through Christ that he has made these things clean for us to eat. And so he changes the script just a little bit. But he's doing this also to say that no one, no person is unclean when it comes to uh, life. He's showing that God does not choose one select people to be his people. It's anyone who will believe in his son. And so we have all of these things in scripture to kind of say God loved his people so much that he wanted to protect them. But as time advanced and knowledge advanced and things advance, he gives us the freedom. He takes out the ordinances, the Bible says, and the things that were against us and contrary to us. And he nailed those things to the cross. He also listed out several things that are like, um, he said, that you know, do not eat and do not touch and do not whatever. These are all the lists. And he said, we're free from that because Jesus is greater than that. Now, that doesn't mean that we, we are free to destroy our bodies and do all these other kind of things. He's still calling us away from that. But he wants to protect us from the things that will destroy us, the things that will, will not make us holy, that will compete for uh, his attention, because he has got to be number one in our lives. If there's something that, you're, that makes you sick, you stop eating it. And he was just protecting his people from the things in this world. He wasn't this bad God saying, you can't do this, you can't do that. He was this good, good father who decided to protect his people from harm. That was a hostage takeover.